What up, y'all? We're here for our weekly anchor message where we are taking a look at our spiritual lessons for the week ahead. Out of our Wild Unknown Alchemy deck, sorry, the archetype deck, Wild Unknown Archetypes, we've got the Pilgrim, followed by Kairos, followed by the Cave. Underneath the Pilgrim, we've got the Magician. Underneath Kairos, we've got the Tower. And underneath the Cave, we've got Nine of Pentacles. All right, so this week feels like something very significant is either going to happen or be seeded to happen or things are going to start happening behind the scenes that will play out later but it's 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 happening something is happening this week something significant in i believe in connection to our manifestations maybe something that we've wanted to manifest for a long time that has been a journey of self-discovery for us and now it is as if the hands of fate, the literal finger of God is coming and moving that will of fortune to turn in our favor because Kairos is divine timing. So I feel like I want, I want to talk about all the cards at the same time, but I want to hold them all up at the same time. It's like, ah, it's just like some, it's a big cohesive message. So much is going on. It's very exciting. So let's look at the uh, the uh, archetype cards real quick. So it's almost like the who, the what, and the where. The who is us right now. We are the pilgrim. We are the magician. This is who we are in this moment. The significance of this is like this, the pilgrim is the, the lifelong journeyer whose daily experience is a devotion and practice that there's like an awareness that you bring to your day today where it's sacred and there's holiness in it and there's awe in that day. And your spiritual practice is not something you save for Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, it's something that you bring with you in every moment with every breath. And so through this sort of devotion, through this seeking of the light, wanting to be like the creator, wanting to do the transformation and the healing within ourselves. And also another layer of just self-discovery, discovery of ourself. Who are we? Who are Who is the personality that is expressing the, the divine through our self as a channel, right? So it's been this path, this long path of self-discovery and and devotion and healing and elevation and change and awakening. And so it's like the more that we devote, the more that we put into our discipline and our spiritual practice, in that practice of sacrificing the ego self, the smaller self, so that we can step up into the embodiment of the higher self, building more affinity with the light of the creator, aligning us even more with that cosmic sovereignty, that harmony, that flow that puts you in that miracle zone, that opens yourself as the vessel to receive the light, to receive the light. Think of the law of vibrational, like think about the law of attraction, think about the law of resonance. Like attracts like. If you look at the frequency of two waves, they can't mesh unless they're the same. If they're you know, one's slow, one's jagged, up and down, like there's dissonance. They can't, you know, they can't come together. So they'll repel. But it's when we have affinity with the light of the creator that we as a vessel are open to like float, like letting that light flow in. We connect with the creator, which means we're connected with the wholeness of all that is. And that means that we're in perfect unity and fulfillment in those moments 
where we can channel miracles. We can channel, you know, we can ma uh, manifest things. Sometimes like this, you know, if you're if there's no resistance there and the, and the parts and pieces are close by, right? So the thing that gives us even more manifesting power is the sacrifices that we make of ourself. When we change our lower nature and we restrict the desire to fall into the body consciousness, when we restrict the desire for instant gratification instead of you know something that's a long-term payoff with more value but it takes more effort, right? Anytime we restrict the desire to receive for the sake of sharing instead of just receiving for the sake alone. It's like those are the times that we are building the vessel, so to speak, where that means that we're becoming more like the light. And so building the vessel means that we're putting effort in. And because of that effort, because of that experience, because of the, the investment that we're making, we care more. And things have more value and we take it more seriously and it's more holy and more sacred. And you, when you get the fulfillment of the thing that you've worked so hard for, you take better care of it. And so that includes not only our consciousness, right? Because, you know, when our consciousness is sharing, you know, affinity with the consciousness of the creator, then things are in harmony. They're wonderful. We're in connection with the creator. Those, that flow of blessings is coming in and our vessel is open and it can, you know, receive. But if we, if our, if our consciousness laps and we fall into negativity and we fall into judgment and fear and lack or doubt or, or resentment or hostility or, or what have you, and that, that cuts us off from our connection with the creator because we're in dissonance then. And so that means that we cut ourselves off from blessing because we're not in that cosmic flow, right? Think of miracles as like a constant flow from the creator. It's like, that's the real natural state that we can be in, but we have to attune our instrument, right? It's like we're out of tune and we need to fine tune ourselves. So this process of fine tuning, we've been on for, um, for a while now. And we're coming to the end of this like huge, long, major, lifelong cycle. And we're beginning a new cycle and it's like an up level. And we've been preparing for this for like a couple of years now. So we've been anticipating this and this is the moment where it's like we're the threshold of moving into this new experience, this new up level. And so we don't want to have one foot on the old timeline and one foot on this one because we're going to be separated and split and, and, and torn in two and, and in a constant state of conflict and inner conflict. So that's going to hold us back. So we have to, you know, move forward and let go of, you know, things from the past that have held us back. And so the more that we do that, the more we gain our cosmic sovereignty and self-mastery and the more power that we have as a co-creator with divine. And so, you know, this pilgrim here and with the magician, it's like creator spirit is saying like, you've been devoted, you've been disciplined. And because of that, you are beginning to step into your higher consciousness, that super consciousness self where you have what it takes to manifest that potential life that your higher self can attain and achieve and maintain. You have the, the mental capacity, you have the consciousness now, you have the heart and the emotional groundedness and sobriety. You have the physical um, strength and capacity and know-how and resources to take this on. And the most important thing of all You've developed a, a direct channel and connection to spirit. And so you know that spirit is your provider, your source, your protector. The spirit is the source of all validation and all, val all fulfillment. And you connect through your heart, the cave, through your heart. And so to see the light here, the light. It's through the portal of the heart. So you know that the fulfillment that you seek in the relationship, your lover or your future lover or wanting one for yourself or this 
dream career that you think will give you, you know, such satisfaction, even if it is your spiritual purpose or, you know, oh, you have to live in that house or in that neighborhood and, and that that's going to give you fulfillment. It's like all of that. Those are just vessels. And without the light, they're just empty vessels. The fulfillment that we're after is really the high that we feel when we are in connection to the light. When we're like in that high state of consciousness and things are good and things feel complete and they feel in, you, we feel in flow, we feel excited and we feel blessed. That's that fulfillment. And it's like everything that we want that the flesh reaches for, it's reaching for small packets of that fulfillment of the light of the creator. But it's fleeting because we believe that it's coming from the flesh, the flesh suits and the, the avatars and the vessels. So those are finite packets of fulfillment and it leaves us wanting, it leaves us craving more. We get on a high and then we crash and we need it again and again. And so then it's like those flesh vessels and the material vessels become idols because we think, oh, this is what's giving me fulfillment. And now I'm obsessed over this. And now I can't be happy without this thing. And now I've put this thing on a pedestal and it's controlling me and it's controlling my emotions and it's controlling my thoughts. And my consciousness is on this because I think that this is this golden calf that's going to make me happy. But really, it's not. All we need to do is remember that this is just the golden calf. This is just the flesh suit. There's nothing in it except for the creator. And it's that shift in consciousness that makes all the difference. Because when you know that, you know that the, the, the vessels, the flesh suits, they can come and go. But really, it's the creator showing up in every way that we need the fulfillment for our life in that moment. And if that is in a way that we need to be challenged to wake ourselves up and to grow and to evolve past our lower selves, then that is, that's what shows up. And so having this awakening and starting to embody this consciousness, it's like, okay, the, the powers coming together of the deep devotion and realization that we are nothing without the light of the creator and that solidifies that connection and that relationship. That consistency, that's the rock that the wise man builds his house on, right? Because if you are solid in your connection with the creator, then you are fulfilled at least once a day in your practice of connection, hopefully of meditation or prayer or, but if you are the pilgrim, then that means that you have a daily devotion. And so your daily connections with the creator fulfill you and you, you feel fulfilled on a daily basis and you have less connection to getting attached to the specifics of the vessels. You know, they can come and go, but it doesn't matter because the light is always there and you are fulfilled. You have a sense of fulfillment every day. So you're not scarce. You're not in panic. You're not in survival mode. So that gives you cosmic sovereignty. When you have cosmic sovereignty, you are not affected by the winds of change, by the shifting of circumstances around you. Sad one day, happy the next. Oh, I'm so inspired. Oh, I'm so depressed. I'm so terrified. I'm overwhelmed. I'm so stressed. I, you know, I have FOMO, but I'm also exhausted and I'm overcommitted and you only live once and uh, torn every which way by now. Oh my gosh, supplies will only last so long. That is being in effect consciousness. That is not sovereign. That is being in your base animal instincts and you are in reaction and you do not have free will when you are in that state. When you are in a state of sovereignty, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are around you because you're understanding that it's all a simulation only there to help you achieve the cosmic sovereignty to see through the illusion. And it doesn't matter what the circumstances are because creator's got it. Everything's going to be taken care of. All my needs are known by the creator. All of my desires are known by the creator. All of the things that are on my path and will fulfill me are known by the creator. And so knowing that 
you're not on an emotional roller coaster. You're grounded. You're sober. You're like, okay, this isn't the end of the world. We'll get through it. We're going to get through it. Everything's fine. And that certainty, that consistency, um, that is called being in cause consciousness because you set the thermostat of your vibration and it is not going to change. It is climate controlled <laughs> because of the practice that you've put in. That is what gives you the cosmic sovereignty. And the thing is, it's a state of consciousness. So we need to stay humble about that because it can be gone in an instant. In an instant, we can fall into negativity, into fear, into lack, into doubt. And then in, in an instant, we're cut off from that flow. We're cut off from the creator. And we're cut off until we can wake up and be like, oh, I've, I've, suddenly gone on a train in a downward spiral and gone into the soap opera of negativity in my thoughts and it's caused a domino effect now i'm speaking negativity and now i am taking negative actions that have negative consequences and i need to put a stop to this damage and it's like you just have to shift your consciousness and you know depending on how how far it went there might be some uh some judgment to pay off right you might have a little chaos come up uh, but it's okay, you know, when you embrace the inconveniences and challenges and you're like, yes, I am working off my tacoon. I'm working off that, that negative speech that I did three days ago, I bet. This is great. Just go on and get it over with. I'll take my lashings, right? You know, uh, it really does. It, it, it transmutes that. It transmutes that uh, being in sin off the mark and it puts us back into Teshuvah, on back to the path in alignment, in our cosmic sovereignty. And so the, the, the miracle of grace is that it's, it's all in the consciousness. And so with the, with the snap of a finger, just like that, you can shift your consciousness again and be one with the creator. And it's that, that unity. It's, it's in an instant there and in an instant gone, you know, um, but we can practice being in it. And, you know, when we're out of it, it's like the, the opponent gets in through the little spaces and the little cracks. Those spaces that we allow the, the, the opponent to come in, it messes with our ego and it makes us tempted and lustful and temperamental and power hungry and competitive and judgmental and, and all those things. But it, we need to close those gaps and not give that opponent a way in. And so that's why we do these devotions. And that's why we realize, oh, my anger might feel very delicious for a moment and I might feel very justified and self-righteous in it, but I know that actually it costs me more in the end and it's actually not, it's losing its appeal because it doesn't give me anything. It doesn't give me a, get me ahead. It actually takes and closes me off from being in that flow. And I'd rather be in the flow. And then that's when you start learning the cosmic sovereignty because you, you can start practicing as long as you can stay aware at a certain level, you can understand now that nothing is worth cutting me off from the creator. Nothing is worth my inner peace. Nothing is worth my fulfillment. Nothing is worth throwing me out of that peace because that cuts me off from my blessings. Nothing is worth cutting me off from my blessings. Not uh, somebody that pisses me off, not something that I feel was unfair or, you know, whatever is going to throw me into what whatever pattern, you know that the enemy uses, not this time. Cosmically sovereign, setting the thermostat, and it's a practice. It's a constant practice and it's a devotion, but it is very worth it because it gives you the ability to manifest from almost instantaneously, pull shit from, from the air, honestly. Um, and it's not you. We're nothing without the creator. We're just a channel. We're just like a tube. <laughs> We're just like an empty puppet. You know, it's all the creator. And that's where we just have to keep that awareness. Uh, but that's what gives us ultimately the power because we're responsible with it. The more that we realize that we're nothing, that we're just here to be servants and channels for the creator to experience creator through, uh, you know, the us through the flesh bags. <laughs> Then, that, then we can be trusted with more of that cosmic power to be co-creators, to, you know, manifest and, and to find our, our divine path. And really the ultimate thing is not to 
manifest whatever you want, but it's almost like you get into a state where you, you can feel the essence of what your soul is desiring. And you can also have the trust to get out of your own way because you might be like blocking your own self. You, you're probably not thinking big enough. And so I've realized that my divine path that's laid out, all of those things are already laid out in store for me. It's like I've got those, um, I don't know if you guys remember Scrooge McDuck from DuckTales, but he had this like huge um, like uh, chamber room. It was like a, a vault with like gold coins that he would go diving into and swimming. And I was like, why doesn't he break his neck when he dives into that gold coin <laughs> swimming pool? But that's basically like your divine plan. It's like in a vault and it's already yours and it's already set aside. And the minute that you're ready for it and you're in that state of resonance, then it's like it shows up and things move out of the way and they change and they fall into place so that they can be available and you can crisscross, cross paths with that thing at the right time. Speaking of time, so we've got Kairos. So this is divine timing. This is that moment of kismet serendipity. I had in my weekly reading, the divinity card came up in the Oracle of Oddities. And I realized, I was like, ooh, divine timing is at play this week. Like God has his hand on this week. There is a finger on this week, something, a major plot point. So when we talk about life, the series, um, like when we use the metaphor, pretend our life is a Netflix series and the, the cycle that's ending, it's as if you, the series got canceled from Netflix, but don't worry, you're not trapped in the void forever in reruns. You are picked back up immediately. New series is starting. It's revamped, got a little bit of a makeover. And a lot of the familiar characters are there. Some of them aren't. Some of them have been taken off the show, right? But the thing is, is that the writers on the new series, You, don't have to go by any of the old dynamics with the characters. They don't have to go by any of the old canon. The old storylines don't apply. The old rules don't apply. You can be totally new character going forward. And none of the old fears have to hold you back. And none of the old patterns have to hold you back anymore. You have total support from the universe to try your best to start with a new fresh foot forward. It's just that we have all of the subconscious programming and muscle memory in our flesh suits playing out these patterns that we ultimately, it's up to us to purge this and shift this and rewrite this within us. But we've got all the help of like the cosmos happening the astrology is like trying to support us. We've got angelic help. We've got the, the leadership and direction of our of, of God in heaven and and the help of Jesus Christ. And Mary's the Mary the mother and Mary Magdalene. It's like everyone is here trying to help us. Um, and there's something happening this week. Divine timing is at play. We've got the tower, sudden change. And and this time I feel like this is a good tower. I feel like a lot of our really negative towers that were like very jolting, I feel like a lot of those, if you've been doing this work for a while and you've changed your life quite a bit, like I don't think you need to worry about a looming like threat. But I do think something, it's like suddenly things are gonna be different this week. And it could be a shift in your thinking. It could be a shift in your mood. Um, I think that the, the spring equinox or, or whatever it is, like Beltane, uh, the, the days are getting longer. I think that happens Sunday. Um, there is a new moon happening Sunday. So the seasons are shifting and things are, things are happening. I'm not sure if this is going to be something obvious that plays out that we see um, this week. It could be. It could be things shifting in, in many areas. It could be just this like invisible shift of the will of destiny into this new timeline that's starting. But I think that there is going to be sudden change. And I think that this, the conditions are going to feel different all of a sudden. Um, like it just felt like everything was like so hard and nothing was ever happening and nothing was ever coming of anything. And I feel like suddenly it's going to feel <clears throat> like opportunities. It's going to feel like when you take an action 
but like it results in something. <laughs> like there's starting to be fruit and possibility. Uh, but I think that it's not without our constant effort to stay on top of it. And I think too, riding out the end of this Pisces season for the next couple of weeks, this is the cave here. This is a place of dark, of quiet. It, it's, it's synonymous with the heart. And one time I had a dream that I was sitting out in outer space, like on an, in an asteroid belt with God. God was sitting next to me in this like essence, this invisible essence. And these asteroids were, they were rotating around a white hot star. And it might be one of the stars in our solar system because I saw that star recently and I was like, hey, that's that star from my dream. Um, but it was like white hot blue, like a blue, white blue star. And the creator said, this is the star inside your heart. And it's so crazy because years later, I was reading some one of the Gnostics somewhere um, and Jesus was talking about the star inside of our heart. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know that this was actually a concept that was talked about. Um, this is just something from my dream. And so, but this to me, when I, when I look at this card, I see the star inside your heart. And I also see that these hands, um, if you look closely, like one of them looks like a man's hand and one of them looks like a woman's hand. So I feel like this is the divine masculine and feminine coming into union within ourselves. So if you think about the first few cards of the tarot, it's like the fool is like the reborn person, born again, off on a new journey, off on a new start, unencumbered by fears. Um, the magician, you know, once you get your, you're starting to understand your own ability to be an act proactive co-creator in this life and take your life into your own hands and then choose who you want to be, not just be on a faded path, but on a choose your destiny path. The high priestess comes next and that's when, okay, I'm setting out on this path. I'm taking ownership of my destiny and now I'm learning to tune in and listen to my inner guidance and learning to how to trust my intuition and connect with Holy Spirit. And I'm mastering that. And then after that, when I can tune into my own intuition and listen to the guidance of Holy Spirit, then I graduate into the Empress. And the Empress is that ability to take the divine feminine aspect of listening to that intuition and guidance and being able to identify that inner voice of Holy Spirit and then put that into action and take action and follow up and follow through with trust and self-worth. And that results in abundance and creativity and pregnancy and fruitfulness. The Empress is fruitful she is always pregnant and surrounded by wheat that's ready for harvest. She is sitting in plush, uh, luxurious fabrics and pillows and textiles and furniture. And she's surrounded by um, rabbits and fruits, you know, wealth and fertility and creativity. So again, you know, we see this like, the masculine and the feminine hands touching. And that's like that union of the masculine and the masculine is the, the Empress's ability to take that insight and then take action on it, you know, and, and make those dreams into a reality, share in an outward way. It's the way we behave. So it's like when we have those two things in union, it's like that is about, that's our ourselves fully, the whole self coming into balance coming into that sacred marriage within. And so that gives us affinity with the divine. But most of us have that, have an imbalance of our ability to share and receive and our inner, you know, our ability to tune into our inner guidance and, and be believe beyond reason and beyond, you know, logic and then actually be able to take action and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes there's a lot going on that's, that's getting in the way. But before this next cycle really kicks off, it's like creator is asking, 
through Pisces season to go deep into the heart. And we're trying to purify the heart from when it's been defiled by that ego or by fears and limiting beliefs and old wounds and echoes of, of things that got put into your subconscious that you don't even realize are still affecting your assumptions that you don't even notice. And so we're deep diving and we're really purging our hearts of that so that starting on this next cycle, we can set ourselves up for the ultimate success. Nine of pentacles here. This is a confident, self-assured uh, business person with their relate. They're a very strong, clear relationship to spirit. Um, this bird represents the Holy Spirit. That she is looking um, to that that connection um, for her security. And so the nine of um, pentacles depicts a person who is standing, usually alone, is single um, because they are uh, they've they found their independence. They found themselves. And so they are sovereign in their self. They have achieved material uh, comforts and they are enjoying the fruits of their labor. And they're still, you know, they're still searching for the ultimate completion with the whole family and legacy and everything, but they're well on their way. And so there is like tuning into the heart is going to set us up and make us feel even more confident, even more capable, even more self-assured and certain, and not just self-assured, but assured in our connection to the creator. And so this is going to set us up for the best situation to, you know, build financial freedom for ourselves eventually to pursue our goals and our talents and our purpose you know, to give more to whatever, you know, job we have. Maybe there's, you know, you're not wanting to start your own thing. Maybe you just want to go further in the company that you're in or whatever. That's good too. All the things matter. We, we need everyone. So, but this is, I think, really coming into our own and starting to really flourish um, with a sense of, uh, with a new sense of self-awareness and a new relationship to self. And we're going to start having different relationships with other people. And so, yeah, there could be, this could be the beginning of building like multiple income streams for yourself. Uh, this could be the beginning of like, say you've been in a career path for a while and there's something that you've actually wanted to start pursuing instead. Like maybe this is the beginning of getting certified or doing the training necessary or the research to prepare you to like, you know, pursue those things, those, those independent sort of goals that you have. Um, this can help you. This can also be like saying that like we've done the healing on ourself, on the relationship with self to now go forward and have a capacity to have healthy relationships with others like better, you know, new friendships and like new and healthier romantic partnerships. Um, but yeah, very sudden change. And there have been so many messages coming through recently that like positive change is a right around the corner. Like don't give up, like don't give up faith, don't give up hope, like good things are happening. We just don't see them yet. So again, I don't feel like ominous or worried so much when I see this tower. And like the eye of divine is on the situation. So trust that whatever is happening right now this week, it's like it's divinely ordained and it's the purpose of it is ultimately to shift us into this up level and to get us directed into the right, uh, get our attention put in the right direction. So again, I don't, uh, I, I don't foresee necessarily anything too bad or jolting, but I think that there is going to be sudden change this week. It's like all of a sudden something's going to happen where it's like things are different and maybe nothing seems to happen on the surface. It could quite possibly, but it might just be that things are brewing behind the scenes that you don't know about yet and the foundations are being laid and the seeds are being planted for maybe something to come into your awareness very soon. 
all right, y'all. Very interesting. It's going to be fun to see how this week plays out. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've had anything happen so far. All right. Talk to y'all tomorrow. Ciao.